So I think progress was made at COP26, but there's still an awful lot to do. Um, we went from 3.7 degrees pathway to 2.4 degrees pathway. For me, there were three things that were decided at COP that were significant. Firstly, countries committed to their plans for 2030 to, to come back next year for their plans for 2030. So that raised the importance of the next decade in terms of reducing CO2. The second thing that was decided was it was recognised that fossil fuels and coal in particular were the cause of um, climate change and written into the agreements and there was agreed to phase down those two, the, the fossil fuels, which for me was significant. And the third area where progress was made was on the bits that were left over from Paris. So the Article 6 and particularly the carbon markets. So I think progress was made, but we really only know the success of COP26 when everybody comes back next year with their 2030 commitments. First of all, the energy use accounts for 73% of emissions in the energy, of course, but also in transportation, agriculture, buildings, industry. So this is absolutely critical that the energy and utilities players help their clients, and they have started a long time ago to help their clients in carbon neutrality, energy saving, uh, and other activities. They have to address three, four types of clients. Uh, meaning uh, industrial, commercials, residentials, but also communities, but also all the transportation uses. And they have to provide uh, solutions to decrease uh, the emissions and uh, consumption of energy in terms of asset management, industrial buildings, in terms of customer relationship management uh, to help the customer to be more savvy in terms of energy and to change the behavior of the customers, uh, but also to help to create new solutions, new business models, flexibility, virtual power plants, everything that you will find in the technology side of the sector uh, to help uh, the customers, whatever the customer are, uh, to, to, to reduce their footprint in terms of carbon emissions. Yeah, so the first deep technology that we need to leverage is digital grid. So the big problem with renewables is intermittency. The grid needs to cope with a lot more distributed and it's need to load. So having the digital grid and investing in the digital grid, one dollar for every dollar invested in renewables is key. The second area is around dispatchable generation and storage. So at the moment, we don't have enough dispatchable generation. So hydrogen could be the answer there. So there needs to be a lot of investment in hydrogen to see if we can get the efficiency of hydrogen down so that hydrogen can be used as dispatchable storage and generation um, for when the renewables aren't working or you know, when the wind stops uh, blowing or the sun stops shining. So beyond the deep technologies that James has developed, just now, uh, we have also the digital technologies. And digital technologies, some of them are really mature today. Uh, IoT, uh, 5G communication, but also uh, data management, uh, robotic process automation, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, which are mature enough to go at scale and to offer solutions. Of course, you need to select exactly the type of use cases you will implement and deploy at scale. It's not so easy. Uh, to select them, but uh, you have a fantastic uh, bucket of levers uh, in the digital technologies, and notably everything is data driven today. Huh? Uh, so, this is why uh, the UT energy and utilities players, that is an intensive data industry, uh, will also bring solutions to their clients along uh, with the technology providers. <laughs>